Marilyn Doobie here, and today I'm playing with one of my canvases that has been around for a very long time. This canvas is now, I think I'm up to two years in the making on this thing. I will let things sit until I'm moved to do something with them, and today I was moved to do something with this canvas. Well, what got me moving on this canvas after such a long time? It was actually the Irresistible Pico Embellisher. I've been recently introduced to these, and I think I might have a crush on these things. These haven't clogged on me because they've got the metal pin that slides right into the nozzle, so that part is a big plus. It will write over anything. On this canvas, I've got all sorts of different mediums, and frankly, I don't even remember what all was on here because it's from so long ago. But this thing is writing all over it. The other thing that's really cool about the paint that's in this, paint ink, whatever they've got in here, is that it holds its shape so that I actually get three-dimensional feeling to this. So wherever I'm drawing and writing and scribbling and tracing, what it's going to do is add a lot of wonderful texture to this. And as I'm adding this texture, part of me had just thought I was going to do a little bit of this on here and then see where it went next, but I pretty much got addicted to this and just kept writing and writing and drawing and doodling and scribbling and adding more to it. The white is very opaque, so that's, that pops out nicely when it's going over things. Making dots with this, so simple. Cool part is, how hard you squeeze the bottle determines how much stuff comes out. It's really a rather simple concept. Squeeze really hard, get more stuff. Don't squeeze much, very little comes out. So I'm just having fun playing and playing and playing, experimenting, making marks, just adding to this and seeing absolutely where it takes me. Now the other thing that's really nice about this stuff is even though I've got the dimension with it, this stuff dries very quickly in my opinion. It was five minutes, maybe maybe ten at the most, and this sucker was completely dry and I was ready to go on to the next step. And I don't live in Arizona and it still dried quickly. Something else that I've been introduced to recently is the all-purpose ink for the Fantastics. And it's this cool little well of ink. I turned it upside down so I'd get a bunch of the ink in the cap, and you can see there's really not a lot in there, but that's actually more than what I need. I'm going to take a Fantastic, which is kind of like a cool little foam of high density or thing of high density foam, when I'm going to dip that right into the ink, and then I'm going to be able to draw, paint, do whatever I want with it. Because it's got a fine point on it, I'm going to use it right inside this word stencil, and I'm going to go and trace over several of the words that I want to use. Using this tool makes it very easy just to pick out exactly the parts that I want from a stencil. No masking, no, no challenge, no, no complexity there. If I want to take a word like heart and just take art out of it, because I really wanted the word art and it wasn't on there exactly, so I can just take pieces and parts of other words. Using the pen, the fantastic tool makes it so easy to take out pieces and parts, like in the word seek. I just want the word see out of that because hidden inside words are lots of other words so that I can get as much use out of this stencil as possible. So instead of wonderful, I just went with wonder. And all of this is being done with that, just that one little dip in the ink. I haven't had to go back and get any more color to keep doing this. This stuff, really, really happy with how much it covers. So I think I'm done, but turns out I'm really not done. I want another word, and I want the word to, T-O, and there's nowhere on here that I can get it from, so I'm just going to make it. I am going to go ahead and just trace over a T, and then I'm going to slide the stencil over just a little bit, because I want to skip the I, and I'm going to do the O right next to it, and I'm going to be able to build the word that I want. By the way, did not add any more ink to that Fantastic. It's still the same ink that I was using from before. So I've done this on deli paper, and I want to make sure that it won't smear or smudge because I'm going to glue this down. So I'm actually going to hit it with a little bit of water, and it's not smearing, so I know it's completely dry. If I don't let it dry completely, it will actually smear and smudge. So you want to make sure that you let it dry completely if you don't want it to smudge when you add some gel medium to it. So now I'm just going to cut the words out, and once they're all cut out, then I'll be ready to add them on to my canvas with some gel medium. Well, now I've got the words positioned where I want them, and I'm just going to grab some gel medium and get those adhered down. Nice thing about using deli paper is it ends up being pretty translucent. Now, it's not going to be completely invisible, but it's pretty invisible. I mean, there really are about a zillion layers on this and enough texture, so what's a little bit more, it'll all blend in perfectly. Well, thanks for joining me today. If you've enjoyed seeing this video, I'd love it if you subscribed to my YouTube channel. 
And of course, I'd love for you to come over and visit the blog. The post that I've got that goes with this video explains some of the meaning that I got out of the words and what happened with the words as I put them down. And as always, if you've got friends that you think would enjoy this video, I'd love it if you'd share it with them. Every time someone shares my videos, comments on what I do, it totally feeds the muse. Thanks for being a part of this colorful journey.